What did you say? In level 399, if you go out the front glass doors, you will be led to the front rooms, which is the real world. Earth. You can't be serious. You cannot see it. Yeah, take a look. I handed the paper to Sam, and he showed Mark the sentence I just read. I was in shock. After all this time, I finally had a direction to go. A way to head. Something to go for. I was happy, obviously. But I was also scared. I knew that now I had something I could lose. Even after all this time, I still didn't really feel like there was a way to leave the back rooms. But now that I've been given the chance to, I was going to take that chance. This... The, do you guys know what this means? I sure do. We have to leave this level. Are we all in agreement? A absolutely. Aiden? Words didn't come out of my mouth. Tears started falling from my eyes. I couldn't even think. This is what I've been waiting for. Are you alright? I... I... Just... I, I can't believe it. I just remembered. You've been here for so long. I can't even imagine how you feel. Oh, uh, you're right. This is cr crazy. I, I need some time to think. But we shouldn't waste time. If you see anyone who you think could have answers potentially, ask them about how to get there. How to get to level 399. We all need to do this, but first, Sam and I need a break. Feel that right? Oh, yeah. I can't believe I forgot what you've been doing. I think we should have a meetup time, you know. How about tomorrow at 3 p.m.? Sounds good to me. Yeah, I can do that. All right. See you then. See ya. I got up and walked out of the room. Mark still had the paper, but I didn't care. I was so tired and wanted to shower and change my clothes. So I went to the elevator, went down to 5 to 600, and went to 512. I unlocked it with the card Charlotte gave me and went inside. I took a shower, changed my clothes, and started writing. I wrote for a long time and then went to bed. I was ready the next morning to go to Mark's room. It was 9 in the morning and I was going to go down into the cafe. I took the elevator down and got some food. I didn't see Mark or Sam, so I assumed they were either still asleep or they were waiting for the cafe to not be so full of people which evidently was a problem. Anyway, I got my food, ate it, and went back upstairs. I wrote a little more in my journal, trying to catch up, and then it turned to 1 p.m. I was getting hungry, because I didn't have much for breakfast, so I decided to go down and get something. When I heard Mark, I saw my door. Hey, uh, you want to come get lunch with us? Yeah, hang on. Be right there. I got dressed, put on my shoes, and opened the door. On the other side of the door was not Mark. I now know his name to be Joshua. He mimicked Mark's voice and I fell for it. Wh who are you? He didn't say anything and walked in. I tried to close the door on him, but it's like he didn't even react. He was so strong that he just opened the door by walking into it, with me pushing on it with full force. He didn't seem to be the talking type, but he was very good at impressions. I knew it was an entity, just because of the sheer strength, and I had somewhat forgotten about Mark telling me who Joshua was. Eventually, after a few minutes of him walking around my room, he sat in a chair in the corner of the room and proceeded to do nothing. He just sat there. I hadn't said a word, but I felt like he wanted me to talk to him, so I tried to. Uh, Joshua, right? No response. My friend told me about you. Is there only one of you? Nothing. 
I feel like you're not really adding to this conversation, so I am just going to stop talking. I stood there in silence, and he sat there in silence. We stared at each other for a while, but I eventually looked away. I moved the desk in a way where I could see him at all times and to a spot where he was furthest away from him. I sat there and just looked at him. I didn't make eye contact a single time, as I'm sure I would have regretted that. He's somewhat tall and skinny, but I knew he could take me in a fight. I tried to open the door, but to no avail. It did not open. I looked at the clock and it said 1.30 p.m. I still had an hour and a half before Mark and Sam realized there was something wrong. I decided to wait for them to come to my door and then I would feel comfortable writing in my journal. So that's what I did. Occasionally I would try to strike up a conversation, but eventually it would just turn into me trying to keep myself sane. I don't even think he blinks. Ever. It's very odd and eerie. After a while, around 3.15 p.m., Mark and Sam came by my door. Aiden, are you in there? Yes, yes I am. Can we come in? Yes. I mean, well, not really, but Joshua is here. Are you serious? Yes, and I don't know what to do. I'm getting pretty hungry, and I can't open the door. Can we give him some? The, the, there should be some emergency rations in the compartment next to the chair. The chair he's sitting in? <laughs> Never mind. I think I'm just going to wait. He doesn't move once he's in the chair. You, you should be fine. Hey, should be is not the right words to use right now. You'll be fine, Aiden. Plus, you almost killed a skin tear out, so I think you got this guy if he tries to pull anything. I knew in my head that was a complete lie. There was no chance I could win against Joshua. Alright, but if you hear screams, they'll probably be mine. They didn't say anything, but I was focused. I was going to slowly walk over to the drawer, open it, and get whatever rations Mark was talking about. And I did just that. I did it and slowly backed away. You good in there? Yeah, I'm good. I got it. Oh, thank the Lord. Hey, how long do I have to stay in here? At least a day. Sometimes it's even gone up to a week. I mean, I I'm sure it won't do that. It'll be fine. We'll come check on you every day at three, all right? Yeah, sounds like a plan. Is, uh... Is there anything I can do to, you know, stop him from staring at me all day? I'm afraid not. Just know that if you ignore him, he won't do anything to you. You should be fine as long as you don't mess with him. Hey, you're really bad at this. You'll be fine, mate. Just get through today and we'll be here tomorrow. Okay, see you then. Bye. See ya, good luck. Thanks, so. Oh. I'll be needing it. They walked off, and it was just me and Joshua again. I reached over to the food I just got and started eating. It was good. It's basically just bars of nutrients and vitamins, things like that. There was also water, uh, almond water, but I've gotten used to just calling it water now. Hopefully, that will change soon, when I get back to the real world. I'm going to have such a nice sip of water. It's going to be cold and fresh, and I won't have to worry about it being poisoned or not safe to drink. It's just going to be water. Refreshing water. At that moment, I had a sudden urge to write about what was happening. But I didn't really want to not have explained the rest of what happened to me before I got to this level. I set my pen down and started reading the pamphlet I got for level 6.1 specifically the entrances and exits, even more specifically the exits. Glass doors at the front of the level serve as a direct entrance into level 11. I saw this and instantly went back in my journal to when I first entered level 29. I knew I had seen the level before, but I just wanted to make sure. I went to the very back of my journal where I store the pictures. I found the picture I took of level 11, the one with super tall concrete buildings as far as the eye can see. 
I guess if we ever really needed to leave this place, that's the best bet, I would assume. But I kept reading anyway. Causing harm will transport one to level three. I was pretty confused when I read that. I, I don't know what it means, causing harm, and how do I avoid that? Because I do not want to go back there. Anyway, when I saw the number three, I instantly got flashbacks to when I was there. But I mostly remember the doors I walked through and the screams I heard while I was there. I continued reading. Albeit an extremely rare occurrence, quantum fluctuations will lead to level negative 999. I thought this was interesting, obviously. I've never heard of that level, but the quantum stuff was the most interesting to me. Because I think it has something to do with time and the effects of it changing things, but I can't be certain. So I read some more. Shattering a window will lead to level 166. Again, never heard of this level, but if I had to, that level could be an emergency escape from level 6.1. Another exit I found that was interesting was as follows. A rusty metal door will lead to level 6. To be honest, I had somewhat forgotten about that level, and even more so the fact that I was actually in its sub-level, which actually surprised me. I thought it would be darker here. Anyway, the last one I saw was this. No clipping through any wall will put one in any of the bars or diners in level 188.1. Again, never heard of this level, but it was pretty close to level negative 188, so I assume they must be somewhat similar. Not sure if the cabin in the woods is a popular theme, but it did say bars slash diners, so I don't think that level is a cabin. Anyway, after I read all of that, I started writing about what happened before I got to that level. At the time, I had just finished writing about level 37, the water level, so I was beginning to write about the mental hospital. I didn't know if I was ready to write about it, but I decided to get over it, because sooner or later, I would have to. So I did. I got over the mental hospital right then and there. I wrote about it, and then level 777, and then the roads to abyss, and 29. The fight with the skin terror, in the crumble of time, along with the man in the hat, which still intrigues me, by the way. I'm not sure why, because usually I would just brush it off as an entity that I've never seen before. But, uh, for some reason, that man makes me curious. Then, uh, I finished up writing, and then all of this stuff happened. After that, I finished up my writing and all this stuff happened, so I had to write about that. And now, after a couple days in this room, and a few visits from Mark and Sam, I'm all caught up. It's officially been two whole days since Joshua barged in here. Mark said that at the turn of the hour he would leave the same exact time he came in. And if he doesn't, then you would have to wait an entire day. It's hard to sleep. I know he's staring at me while I sleep, but I can't really do anything about that. I kind of feel powerless in here, like it's his room. Anyway, it's really creepy, and when I took a picture of him, he didn't seem to care. I was worried it would trigger him or something, but it didn't. Mark and Sam have been sliding papers they've gathered under the doors to me so that I have things to read and think about. Mark also gave me the paper to level 399, The Neon Paradise. It's a very informative page, and I'm so glad we found it. It got me thinking, though. Why was Charlotte trying to throw it away? Does she not want people to leave this level? And if so, why? Is there some reason she wants people to stay? Or is there no evil motive, and I'm just overreacting? She could have just seen a crumpled up piece of paper on the floor and threw it in the trash. I can't know for sure, but what I do know for sure is that this paper is the best thing we could have ever found, and I'm so glad we did. Knowing that there is an exit out there, somewhere, it gives me hope. And it's no longer just false hope. It's real. It feels real. Anyway, I'm gonna go to sleep. I've been writing for three days straight, and I'm exhausted. So this is Aiden, signing off.
All right, so just woke up, and Joshua is still here. It feels good to write in my journal. If I didn't have one, I had no idea what I would be doing right now. But I started working out again. I've lost quite a bit of strength over the course of these past few months. You know, all the injuries and my working out has finally caught up with me. And I can't do as many push-ups as I used to be able to. It's not that bad, but it could definitely be better. And now, with a constant source of protein and nutrients, I should be able to get my strength up quicker. Last night, while I was trying to fall asleep, I had my ear up against my pillow, and the floor in my room is made out of carpet. You see, when I was a child, I used to hear these footsteps on carpet, and I wouldn't move an inch whenever I heard them, but they never got further away, and eventually they would actually get really loud and close. I would look up and see no one. After a couple of months of this happening, I realized it was my heartbeat against the pillow and blood flowing in my ears. And the footsteps getting louder was just my heartbeat getting louder because I was scared. So when I heard those same footsteps here at level 6.1, I got very scared. But because it was so long ago, I forgot it was my heartbeat. And so I looked over and saw Joshua still sitting in the chair, just staring at me. Somehow that made me relieved. I guess after three entire days of being watched, it starts to lose its effectiveness. It's not pleasant to see, though, especially in the dark. Anyway, after I worked out, I thought about how we could get information on level 399. Sam and Mark hadn't really told me much about their endeavors to get information, but I assumed it was going well. I tried not to worry about it too much and just relaxed for a little bit. I really just laid in bed reading through my journal, and waited. I waited some more, and some more, until it was 2.30pm. I knew if he was going to leave, it was going to be soon. So, I just had to wait 30 more minutes, and then there was a chance he would leave. I looked through some pictures of Italy. It was so beautiful, and I really wanted to see it again. I kept thinking about what real life would be like after all of this. Would I forget about the back rooms and if so would i still have this journal would i still have the pictures to prove everything but would i be able to continue a normal life would i be able to forget all of the horrible things i've seen all of the pain i've been through where would i come out of the back rooms at italy if so sam and i could meet up pretty quickly i'll make sure to talk about that next time i see mark and sam Anyway, it's 2.55 right now, so I'm gonna go. If Joshua doesn't walk out at 3, then I have to wait a whole other day, which would suck. So I'm just gonna cross my fingers and hope he does leave. But for now, this is Aiden, signing off. So I have to make this quick because the three of us are leaving tomorrow and it's late. So I'll quickly explain what happened. Basically at 3 p.m. Joshua walked out of my room and so did I. I saw him knocking at other doors and saying words that I couldn't hear. But it was pretty disturbing nonetheless. Anyway, I eventually came across Mark and Sam. They were both in Mark's room and I knocked on the door. They didn't open it first, but I'm glad they didn't. They're both getting smarter and more experienced, which is really good. 
They eventually let me in, and we celebrated my return. Then we talked for a little while. Man, it's so good to see you again. I thought that guy was never going to come out. Yeah, <laughs> you have no idea. I hated being in there. I bet. You were missing out, mate. The, the, the dinner hall has a bloody steak. Like, proper steaks. Like, meaty, protein-filled steaks. It, it's amazing. We need to have some as a last meal here. What do you mean, last meal? He means we found how to get to level 399. What? How? Right, so we literally just walk out the front doors, right? And wait for a train at a metro station that not scattered around level 11. It's a neon train, and it can take you to all different kinds of levels. But ultimately, it takes you to level 399. You can choose when to get off, so it's almost similar to the hub in a way. That's great. So what time tomorrow? We were just talking about that. Do you have any ideas, Sam? I was thinking around 12 to 1 p.m. so that we're full on food and water on our trek into level 11. Yeah, I agree. That sounds good. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, well, uh, I'm not really sure what else to do in the meantime. Wait, actually, I was thinking about if Joshua was in my room, I don't think I would be able to sleep. So, how did you manage that? Yeah, it was, um, difficult, to say the least. It was mostly thinking about other things, like the real world and things like that. Oh, uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about something. What is it? Okay, so, when we get out of here, out of the back rooms... I was thinking we should meet up, all three of us. Where do you think we should do that? It kind of depends on where we no clip back into the real world. If I come back exactly where I went in at, then Sam and I would be very close, which would be coordinated very easily. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it works, but I would assume it is, because I just can't think of anywhere else we would come back to. Well, that sucks. I'm all the way in Arizona, but what if we just come back in random locations scattered all over the earth? Well, let's just pray that's not the case, because if one of us comes back in an ocean, that person is dead. Yeah, you're right. Let's just not think about that. Come up with one spot to meet up at. Wait a second. I was thinking, and I had the thought of what if we all lost our memory of this place once we're out. So uh, I came up with a plan. I ripped out an empty page from my journal and equally divided it into three pieces. I gave one to Mark and one to Sam, and I kept one for myself. Alright, so we're going to write down each of our names and phone numbers down onto these pieces of paper. Then, on the back, we'll write the location of our meetup in the real world, so that even if we do forget what happened here, we still have something to go off of. Alright. That makes sense. So, uh, where should we meet up? Well, Aiden and I are both in Italy somewhere, and you're in Arizona, so it's not just going to be a long drive. We could both get plane tickets and go over there to Arizona, or you could pack and fly over to Italy. Personally, I don't really care. There are landmarks in each place, so I don't think it matters. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm fine with either one. And I actually live in the U.S., so it might be better to just go over to Arizona for me personally. Hmm, I'm not sure. We could all meet up at the hotel closest to the Grand Canyon if y'all come over here. Or since you guys are already packed over there and both probably have hotel rooms, I could just go over there and we could meet up at the Coliseum or something. Yeah, personally I'm fine with either one. Sign. I don't know which one is better. Actually, it is better if I go over there. Mostly because I'm one person. I can pack whatever I need, and you guys already have a hotel. It would be a waste of money for you to both fly out here and check it into an entirely different hotel. Makes sense. Alright then, uh, Sam and I will be waiting for you at the Coliseum, I guess. Yeah, I can roll with that. Sweet. Sounds like a plan. We all wrote down everything. Names, numbers, and a meetup spot. 
We also wrote the date and time. All right, this is good. Actually, this is great. You're right. I've never really felt this good in the back rooms. I mean, that steak is a close second, but yeah, this is great. So what's gonna happen to us when we go back into the real world? Like, are you gonna be 14 years older or will time have moved at all? That's a good question. I don't think there's any way to know just yet, but I think it makes the most sense that it would be the same time we went all in at. I mean, all individually. All right, well, it sounds good. Anyway, it's, uh, it's full right now, so I'm gonna go take a shower and get dressed for a lovely steak away in my mouth. You seem uh, somewhat obsessed with steaks. Mate, name one thing better than a good old steak. Uh, cheese. Exactly. You can't name a single thing better than it, because it doesn't exist. Anyway, see you boys in two hours. Let's meet up at six, nearest elevator on Mark's floor. All right, you got it. Sweet, I'll be there. I went to my room, took a shower, and got dressed. Then I started writing. It's currently 5.50, so I need to get going soon. I'm not sure what I'm going to eat. I want to try the steak, but I also just want a good old cheeseburger. Whatever. Uh, I'll decide when I get there. But it's a long day tomorrow. So, for now, this is Aiden. Signing off.